Hi everybody, it's Anne and welcome to my channel. Welcome to Reality Pass TV where we talk about all things reality TV shows and all things reality TV show stars. Listen, if you love reality TV, this is for you, okay? Now you guys, I've been saying I have a plan for this channel, okay? But of course, I didn't have time to actually start what I was planning to do. But today I was like, you know what? I've done, you know, a bit of research on the videos that I want to do. So let me start today. Let me give you the first video. I want to talk more about reality TV shows, you guys, and more like the lives of the people on a reality show, how they are affected by doing reality shows. And the first show that I want to talk about is the show called Kwa Njomani. I've spoken about this show on my channel, especially when the drama was taking place between Chicken and his mother. Kwa Njomani is a reality show on channel 163. I think it's in Zante Way 2. If you want to watch season 1, it is on Showmax. And season 2, I believe that it is still on catch up the stv catch up but even if you don't watch it i will tell you about it so i want to do a series where i talk about how reality tv affects families or how reality tv affects the individuals that do reality tv shows whether it's positive or whether it's negative because doing a show is more than just being on tv it affects you even outside of the show and i feel like the um, jomani family the mklongo family is like a very good example of how a reality show can leave you having impacted your relationships in a negative way as the viewers we get entertained but the families are not usually having good relationships after the reality show is done okay now Wang Jomane, they have done two seasons like i have said you guys and both the seasons were really really good Season one was more positive than season two. I think they fought a lot in season two. I think we started to feel like these people might be a family, but maybe they don't like each other that much. Maybe uh, they have issues that are not resolved that they need to resolve. That was it revealed even more when uh, Smangele and Chicken started fighting outside of the show. The, for those who have not watched the show, let me explain who is on the show. So Smangele is a Sangoma from Mlazi. They live in Mlazi, the, the whole family. So Usmangele is a Sangoma. She is a star of the show, honestly. I do feel like they wouldn't have a show without Chicken because Chicken is the one that introduced the whole family to social media. And social media activities uh, is what got them the reality TV show. So I do feel like Chicken was a big part of the family getting a reality show. But the real, real breakout star of that show is Umamus Mange Lem Shongo because she's the one that people just watch more. And also after the show, she's the one that has done more things because of the show. She has been uh, acting on different productions after she did the show and she's doing really really well you guys okay as an actress now okay i haven't seen chicken do things outside of the show except i've seen him maybe go to events maybe to host or mc but on tv i haven't seen him much so i feel like the mother really is the one that has become a star after she did the show but i still say that it wouldn't be like that had it not been for chicken because he is the one that actually came up with the idea yeah, for them to have this family page on facebook so usmangele has three kids she has untoko she has uh uchikin and she also has a son that i feel like she must have had him later in life and the son because it's younger and lives with the father so she has three kids and then there is Uma. then there is umamkulu mamkulu is mangele's sister mamkulu has uh two kids okay or oh, those are the two kids that we have seen she has uspe who has spent some time in prison so she, he wasn't part of season one and then there is is it Nandi or Nandi? <laughs> the 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 sign as well that has been on both uh, the seasons so these are the family members that make part of the show because Mangele is a sangoma now and then you get to see amatwasa ik and now and then you will get to see the friends in season one we did see one of the twasas which was now the person that she's dating in season 
to which is Ulal. In season one, she was just it was uh, she wasn't introduced to us as even a potential or uh, like potential love interest for Smangele. So I was really surprised when in season two now they are seeing each other and in fact they are about to get married, which is one of the things that caused tension uh, between the family members. So that's all the people that we have as part of the show Kwanjo Man. Now, you guys, I don't know how the checks look like, honestly, when it comes to families doing reality shows. Do you get one big check and then maybe one family member who is the one that is responsible for the show to split the money? Do, do individuals get individual checks? Are the checks equal? Does anybody get more? I don't know, you guys, because I know that the reason that uh, Usmangele and or oh, chicken started fighting was because of money i believe it was because of money that they make on facebook because they had a family page that was run by uh Uchikin, and there were mentioned there was a mention of the money that that is supposed to come from facebook and how that money was supposed to be split there was a fight about that and there was also a fight about the money that came from the show okay so money now you guys money well and email causes problems in family relationships now you have money you have people that work together and then it's a reality show because now everything that happens with them we also have opinions on it okay i am not a supporter of a people airing their dirty laundry for the public on social media okay and if they do it a reality show and they want to share it on a reality show, I think that there is the best idea. But I feel like I, under normal circumstances, I'm not in support. For an example, if you have a bad relationship with your sister to come on social media and air all of her dirty laundry. Because what happens is that we are likely to forgive our family members. I can be fighting with my sister today and tomorrow I've, uh, tomorrow I've for, uh, forgiven her. I can be fighting with my mother today, tomorrow I've forgiven her. What happens is that us, the followers and the viewers will still be remembering that and will still be holding on to that, okay? I once did a video on my channel, my main channel, where I was talking about one content creator on YouTube that had done a video about her mother. And I had said that I don't understand why she would uh, present her mother like that on social media. And uh, people had come for me to say, why can't she share her story and all of that? Because I was like, but when we see her mother now, we're thinking this is a toxic mother that does this and this and that, you know. And recently I saw a post where she was posting something positive about her mother. Now, this is good, you guys, because of course, okay, they are working on their relationship with her mother. But I saw her mother and I was thinking toxic mom, the mom that always wants money, the mom, the mom that doesn't, is never satisfied. So for me, I feel like as much as you can share your story, but I feel like some things you shouldn't be sharing on social media because the viewers and the followers will be holding on to whatever bad thing that you said about your family member when when you have forgiven the family member. It's complicated here because not only do they have that page on social media where they were sharing their lives, but they're also on a reality TV show. So as much as I would have loved for them to resolve their conflicts away from the cameras, it was almost impossible because if they are not on TV, then they are on TikTok or they are on Facebook. So we were seeing every everything when it came to them fighting and it was disappointing to actually see because i really liked like i i still like that family and i hope you guys that they do come back together recently you guys there are signs that maybe they are working things out because chicken has been in cape town for months now after the fight with his mother he wrote this big message where he was saying he's done he wants his mother to leave him alone he was talking about how toxic his mother is and he said he wants to be, leave, uh, be left alone he was going to cape town to live with his uh, boyfriend and then they started posting videos of just him and the boyfriend we were not seeing smangel smangel now went on to post on her own social media she even started a podcast channel here on youtube because now the content is not going on guanjo money page because chicken was the one that was in control of that page he's still posting but it's not family content anymore so smangel is now doing her own thing i have to say you guys the podcast is really good actually but she's only done two episodes so i don't know what's happening and it's been weeks the two episodes were posted one after the other and then they just stopped i don't know what's happening and the views are viewing so i don't know okay but the podcast is really good 
one episode that she did on that podcast it was her being interviewed by um rosa from from Ukos fm and it's a good one you guys it's a good interview if you like to listen to people's life stories there is an interview to watch okay it's one hour 40 14 minutes i think but the only thing is that the interview is in zulu i guess you can put subtitles there but it's not the same okay but if you just want a summary i will tell you over here what that interview is about okay so in this video i want to take some time you guys for us to just understand a little bit about usmangele because that is the person that actually helped the family to get uh, famous because of the funny things that she would say on social media okay so when you watch the interview on her podcast channel you actually get to learn uh, about her life where she comes uh, where she comes from and what has made her the person that she is because right now we just see this sangoma that has the confidence for days but if you listen to her story you can understand her a little bit i don't want to lie you guys when the fight between usmangele and uh, uh chicken started and they were doing it on social social media not only was it chicken that was posting what was happening with them on social media but even the mother was posting everything on social media i felt like this is a toxic mom i don't want to lie i was like this is so toxic i know it's toxic of uh chicken to do it on social media but it's even more toxic for the mother to do it on social media so watching the interview for me made um made things clear for me in terms of who she is and where she comes from sometimes you just need to know somebody's story to understand why they are the way that they are i know that her kids probably know the stories that she tells on that podcast but i think that they would still benefit from watching that interview i know maybe they're feeling like ah, we've had this story so 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 many times but i felt like maybe they would get an opportunity to understand their mother better if they just watch that episode. So I hope that Chicken and Dogo, who is her firstborn, have watched that interview. Now, let's start with the rise and the fall of Kwanjumane. The background on Usmangele, Usmangele grew up Emlazi. They still live Emlazi, you guys. So when she tells the story of her childhood, so her mother had her, had her sister, Umamkul, who's part of the show, had her sister before she married Smangele's father, okay? Smangele's father was married to another woman whom at some point went blind and needed somebody to come and help her out in the house, okay? So the girl comes, you know, young woman, I'm imagining, she's not giving any ages, she comes to help here in the house, okay? And we all know the helpers sometimes be helping in the house and be helping with the husband, okay? So it became that kind of a situation. They discover that this woman was not totally blind because at some point she's the one that is like, I know what's happening here. <laughs> so she could see a little bit, but she never told them that she could see a little bit. So when they are getting up to no good, she could see them. But she shocks them by saying, listen, I can not see. I like this girl. She's doing a, a good job here. Just marry her. You know, I'm giving you permission to marry her. So that is how Smangele's mother marries Smangele's dad. Then they have Smangele. And then after that, they adopted the brother that we see on, I think, Usai, the brother that we see, the funny brother that we see on the show. And then there's also Undota, the other brother. They had another child because after Smangal, apparently, the mother thought she was not going to have a boy. And then she had a boy. So there is an adoptive brother we do see on, on, on the show. I like the fact that when the brother is participating on the show, you never really feel like he is a, he's like, they treat her like a brother. He's very funny, though. If you haven't watched the show, <laughs> you need to watch it just for that character. He, he I mean, he shows up in a few episodes, so he's not one of the main cast members. He's not even on one of the pictures, but maybe they should add him because I think that he is really, really uh, funny. So then, you guys, he, uh, she marries this man, Umshongo, that is Mangele's mother. Now, I imagine that he was a little bit older than her because this girl had come to help in the house and the wife had gone blind i'm thinking maybe they were already in their old age i don't know you guys but my imagination uh, gave me that picture because she doesn't give us the ages when she's telling uh the story now you guys this man already had kids and had grown uh kids 
So after Smangala's mom marries uh, Smangala's dad, you know, the marriage, it doesn't work out well. But it's not really them, the mother and the father. There is a son who is Smangala's mom's stepson that comes into the picture that becomes very, very abusive to Smangala's mom. I imagine you guys that maybe they felt like uh, Smangala's mom um, did an evil thing by, by coming to the house to help out and then ended up marrying their dad. I'm just imagining maybe those were the reasons. But when she tells those stories, she says that she has horrible stories of how they even found their mom swimming in a pool of blood. There is a story here about their mom having one of her legs amputated, so she only had one leg. And that was a situation she was in where she was being abused by a step uh, son uh, so much. So she was getting beaten almost every day by the stepson. She doesn't say anything about the father being physically abusive, but she does mention that the father was not really kind with the words. So my interpretation of that, even though she doesn't say it that way, was that the father was also verbally abusive uh, to her mother. So now... She says that growing up, she was very close to her dad. Because remember, Mam Kulu is not Mklongo's biological child. She is the one that is Mklongo's biological child. And she grew up very, very close to her father. And usually, you guys, when a woman gets married and they are bringing children from outside of the marriage and then they have children in the marriage, sometimes it will feel like the woman will be loving the children that are from the marriage more than the child that they brought in. It will feel like sometimes the child that was brought into the marriage is sort of like an inconvenience in the relationship that they in with the husband. But the opposite for Smangana happened because she was so close to her father and her father was not very kind with his, with his words when it comes to her mother. And he would always say that he's going to kick her out and all of that. This is his house and he's going to kick her out and all of that. And also the brother was uh, abusive to the mother. For some reason, Smangela's mom, it sounds like she took out her anger on Smangela. So Smangela grew up not having a good relationship with her mom. She talks about how uh, when she was growing up, of course, corporal punishment. <laughs> so most of the families, you guys, are, even at home, business like a peach tree. Okay. For, it's like every household had to have its summer pages because that was like a perfect punishment tool for our parents. But most of our parents, baby tatanja just one of Uswazi Lumpinches, Baksha Basha Lepug, and there will be it. At Yena. Makiwa in was to punish her. Her mother went all the way, five or ten of them, and I'm shying as So she says she feels like the punishment was too much and was unnecessary. She does admit though that she was a very naughty child. Okay. At some point she would just disappear from home and come back whenever she wants to come back. So that her being naughty like that and her uh being so close to her father and her mother not getting really um good treatment from the Mklongo family made her mom even more angry with her and their relationship was even worse. She falls pregnant in a grade nine, which was standard seven at the time, leaves school and then things get worse because now her mother is not understanding why you're having a baby in standard seven when I thought that you should be in a school okay she does talk about finding her first uh, love and i think that's something that affected her, her life a lot you guys but she tells a story of how after she had her baby her mother really didn't want her in the home okay she even talks about the one thing that she didn't understand was yes i did fall pregnant young every mother would be angry with that but it was like with her mother the anger was not going away. You know, like when you fall pregnant at home and you're not married, the parents will be upset. But by the time the, the child comes, they are excited and they embrace the child. And sometimes they will even take care of a child for you to go back to school. There wasn't a situation for her. Her mother didn't want anything to do with her. So what ended up happening was that her mother-in-law, which was the baby daddy's mother, you know, who didn't like her, sent her because her mother said, no, you're going to go and stay with the boyfriend. Now, guys, this is this is somebody from grade nine. If you say the child must go stay with the child, 
when she gets there, the mother-in-law says that, you know what, then Uzohambi Oshale Makaya with Ukoko. When she gets there, Emakaya Ukoko is sick. She needs somebody to nurse her. Now you have a small child. Your mother is not around. You don't even know how to breastfeed a child, feel the ch feed a child, change a child, all of that. Then you have this old woman who is needing to be changed herself and taken care of. In Pillow and Emakaya and Imperial Selection, guys, can be so, so different. And... I imagine as a child moving from Ipilaya selection to a Makaya where now you have to go to the river to fetch a manzi just to buy this person Okolayo or Zingolisayo. That must be horrible. When she comes back to Emlazi, after leaving a Makaya, she said she wasn't looking so good. Okay. I had to be in a man's and everything. In a man's and everything. She cracked heels. You know, you know, Makaya, she's so naive and all of that. And she says when she came back, Emlazi, the first thing that the mother in law said to her was like, Hey, do you think to my son, Jobun Jane? Looking like this, you think my son is still going to be interested in you? And she said that she was very hurt by that because. The very same reason that she had gone to, uh, the, the reason that she looked the way she looked is because she had gone to take care of this woman's mother, back Emma Kai. Now she's talking like this. But she said she was right, this woman, because yes, the boyfriend, when he saw her, he was like, you know, yes. That's how she ended up having to raise a child all by herself because the father was not present. They do get together later on, you guys, but at that point she had to see what she can do now her father passes away very early in um in her childhood even before she uh, she has a baby and goes and stay in makaya okay she says that her father uh, had cancer but before he died he had made sure that he he made sure that he had written a letter to say that the son that was abusing the mother uh, had been disowned by him. So he had to make it official that he was disowning the son because the abusive uh, behavior towards the mother was getting worse and worse. And then after that, he passes away the uh, the father and then they are left with the mother. Okay. Now, Mom Kulu, the one that we see on the show, who is her sister, is the one that was more like a child that was Obela Lela Ikai. So now that with the fact that it fell to Smangele like her mother loved, you know, her sister more, it got to a point where now her mother was passing away. This is after she had fallen pregnant and her mom had found out that she was pregnant. Guys, listen, she tells funny stories over there. If I tell all of the stories she tells, then this video will be as long as the interviews. But there is a story of her being at school and it's hot. She's pregnant. She already knows she's pregnant, but she hasn't said it home. She faints and then just decides to pretend like she's having a stroke or something. Then they take her home and she knows what's the family is about to find out that she's pregnant she decides to be acting like she's having seizures heart attack and not heart attack stroke a stroke and then she was shaking herself <laughs> so funny stuff so her mom decides what they need to go by obono umtandazi or something and then they go she's left behind with her sister her sister is taking care of her so obviously her sister was looking at her and seeing so when people are not looking this one is well <laughs> and then when they look at her she starts shaking and then when they go to see Umtana, Umtana is like, listen, this, go and ask her, that's how her mother found out that she was pregnant and it wasn't nice after that, okay? So the, her mother passes away and she says that when the mother passed away, that is when things started getting worse for her because now there wasn't a mother in the home to take care of them. Now they have to, you know, see what they do with their lives. Guys, I will end here for episode one and we will continue in the next video thank you so much for watching this video tell me what you think about it in the comment section like the video before Pumegona. share it with your friends with your family and even with strangers